Welcome everyone to the One You Man intersection. We're stepping into the reconnection in the One You Man is becoming a reality. Um, uh, you know, before we start tonight, I just, I just want to focus. I know Bob's on as well. And uh, Bob and I had a good amount of time to connect. We were out in Arizona together at the MLR a couple of weeks ago. And um, we really, I, I'm just getting a sense, we're really going to be stepping up the prayer focus next year. There are some incredible ministries uh, uh, that the Lord has, is releasing in and around us you know, um, um, uh, that are, are, are part of the pieces of the puzzle of this restoration that the Lord is bringing forth in these days. You, and, um, and so I think we're going to find that as we move into next year, each of the weeks being led by different One You Man leaders and some of their ministry focuses are going to take a slightly keener focus where we can really begin to get behind some of the other pieces of this, of this puzzle to help bring um, this one new man message forth. And there are some really good things brewing as far as us connecting deeper in the one new man um, that you know I think we need to pray into. So very exciting. Um, for tonight, um, you know, the Romans 911 webinar obviously now is the first Thursday of each month, and we and we take the uh, the One You Man intersection prayer, prayer hour to really focus uh, on on this message that we're bringing forth, and we're using the the book in in the webinar to go and enter into deeper dialogue with uh, all sorts of believers and really want to encourage you, you know, Charisma is getting behind this project. They're promoting uh, the recordings um, every month. Um, I'm doing a, a, like a 500 word article with uh, Leslie Crincoli and, and it's being promoted on a monthly basis. You know, I really want to encourage you to share those posts and help us to build exposure and get this word out to other one, other one you men, focused people, other uh, beloved brothers and sisters that are moving into the Israel peace. You know, the truth is we are just touching the hem of the garment when it comes to this restoration. We're just beginning. You know, if we if we look at the, the pictures that were presented with Romans 911 when it launched, the gates were opening. Remember, it was only a year ago that Jonathan Kahn smashed that pot, that Jeremiah clay pot on the stage in Washington, D.C., and something was released. It was almost like judgment is inevitable, and uh, but out of judgment comes mercy, and um, judgment begins in the house, and I believe even as we blew this trumpet into this Shemitah year, God is stepping us up, um, and some of us are experiencing stronger attacks. There's greater resistance. I'm, I'm speaking to a lot of believers that are encountering uh, greater resistance, and you know, um, I, I, I think the way we've done things, and you know, as we, as we mature as believers, we tend to get into like habits, spiritual habits, and sometimes not all those habits are going to work for us during these days. God's calling us to adjust and to shift and to move with him, and he needs his body to be strong. He needs us to be strong. And um, uh, I, I, I just have a sense that, um, that the Lord is stepping it up and he's causing us to remember, remember the two hands, right? The two hands of Nehemiah, this position, you're, you're going to hear me keep teaching this time and time and time again until it's so deep down into our kishkas. And you know why? Uh, and I, I'll tell you why, because it's one thing to understand a teaching but it's another thing to experience it and live it. And we are now being called to live these two hands, to move in this supernatural love, unconditional love, the way that Yeshua loves, 
but then to move in this vigilance, how dare the enemy come against us and the authority that actually is in each of us. If we really had a sense and an understanding of how much authority we really have, because the Yeshua has defeated the enemy already, uh, we would be moving in much greater authority. And I think what we're going to see in this next year or two is we're going to see uh, uh, the, the Lord is almost allowing, he's allowing uh, greater uh, uh, attack from the enemy, but it is to get us ready. It's to cause us to be the warriors that we need to be. Remember when David went out to battle, boy, this was nothing that I was going to share on that I thought I was going to share on tonight, but I think, I think it's important. As David went out to battle, uh, there was this rage on him. Uh, there was this spirit of rage when Yeshua went into the temple to ransack the tables. There was this righteous anger. And how dare the enemy come against you and attack you and put you on the defensive? How dare he do that? And so there's this place. You can hear it in my voice. There's like a vigilance that is arising that I believe needs to arise in each of us during this day because we need to regularly put the enemy under our feet because he is not going to steal my peace and my joy. And he's not going to take my authority away from, from me. And he's not going to put me constantly on my back foot. And I'm very familiar walking many of my years in the kingdom, being on the back foot and just fighting to maintain my peace. But beloved, that's not where we're called in this hour. We are called to put feet forward and to take back what belongs to the Lord. And there is land, spiritual land, spiritual land, especially for the kingdom, especially for the church, that we are called to stand in the gap for, that God is going to use us to, to, uh, to stand in the gap and fight for the rest of the ecclesia to come into this restoration. So I just want to encourage you, beloved, if you are, if you are sensing a greater offense from the enemy, a greater attack, you know, um, break off that condemnation. Don't allow him to put you in prison with your weaknesses. We've all got them. God uses them. And guess what? The only thing that Paul boasted about was his weaknesses, you know, because they caused him to cry out and to be needy constantly of Yeshua. And, and as we cling to the hem of his garment and as we cling to the cross, you know, a couple of weeks ago in, in uh, one of the Shabbat, praying in the Shabbat meetings, I didn't have time to share this, but I, I had a vision. It was a beautiful vision, beloved. Sometimes when I'm struggling with weaknesses, I, I see myself in the spirit hugging the wooden crosses like on my shoulder and I'm like hugging the cross and I'm like, I'm like, like locking my arms around it because I know the cross is going to bring me to the resurrection. It's going to bring me to the new life. But this time I was hugging the cross and the cross turned into a sponge. It was a white, beautiful sponge, but I kept on squeezing it the way I usually do. And out of it came this liquid love that just permeated my body and my spirit. And I was oozing with this, this liquid love, this, this, this gift, of this baptism of love that many of us are beginning to cry out for uh, that I think is going to help melt the barriers in the family of God, melt down the division and the resistances. You know, beloved, the family of God is a mess. It, we're a mess. The church is a mess. We need to be real and look at the body with where it is because the father wants it restored. He wants it cleaned up. And it, it comes about when we begin as individuals in the kingdom to humble ourselves and come into a deeper place of, of prayer and repentance. And um, uh, as much as I may be dealing with it and I'm having to take my sword out and put my armor on uh, more and more 
at the moment because I, I need to fight to maintain what belongs to me. I know it's for my good. I know there's nothing like suffering that brings about God's character and his will in our lives. So I just, I just felt like I, I, I needed to share that with us tonight. I want to shift just a little bit into our prayer focus um, for tonight. And, I, I, and, and, you know, this is our third meeting now for the Romans 911 project webinar. And, and we're, we're tweaking it and we're making adjustments and we're learning as we go along. And I had a sense tonight for the One Human Intersection that the Lord wants to use the same points that we're going to be talking about tonight in the webinar for us to bring them before the Lord and for us to hear from the spirit and then to pray into them so that by the time we get into the webinar um, uh, uh, in the next hour, we will not only have a sense of what we need to talk about and dialogue uh, on this particular subject tonight, but we'll also have more of the mind of Messiah, more of the mind of Christ. To move into these things so you know bear with me i don't have it all down i'm seeking the lord as we go along and you're going to find you know within five or six months this is going to be it's going to get really fine-tuned so that uh, we're going to have a very tight meeting you know that we're all going to be proud of and we want to going to be able to promote into the body to invite the wider body to begin to come into this restoration and then i also want to encourage you you know, with the with the other ministry focuses, you know that this this one you man is not all about Romans nine one one project. We are this we're carrying a very vital piece of the puzzle here. We're helping to open the gates and lay the pathway, but there's so many other pieces that the Lord is releasing during these days to bring us together. You remember that image in the Romans nine one one video where. We see all the different pieces of the puzzle, and at the end, and at the end of the image, you see Yeshua's face. Well, just think of all the different pieces the Lord is is bringing together in this restoration and reformation um, to establish His plans and His purposes. So, um, um, be, you know, be prayerful about that with us, because uh, God is speaking to us about fine tuning and and really expanding the one new man vision and, and getting it out there in the body. And I think within the next two to three years, we're going to see conferences and gatherings, you know, especially as we come out of COVID, please God, um, more gatherings where we can begin to come together and, and um, not just uh, come together in greater unity as watchmen, but really have uh, an outline and a pathway for leadership and others in the church to begin to come into a deeper place of this restoration and reformation. And remember, beloved, it's not just about the one you met. It, this, this reformation is about Yeshua's prayer being answered in John 17. It's about the end time harvest. It's about Israel's awakening and the preparation of the bride and the reformation that's necessary in the ecclesia to move us into this place. And of course, the Romans 911 project plays a significant role in that, because if you'd like, it's kind of like an alpha. It's kind of like an alpha course, you know, where, where the alpha course is used to disciple the body into the foundation of the faith. The Romans 911 project is like is like a, is a course like this to really disciple the body and get them on this pathway. Uh, hallelujah. So having said that, um, the, the focus tonight, um, we're going to be using, we're, we're using Romans 911 second edition. And um, I when I was praying last week about, you know, uh, the topic and, and of discussion, I kind of wanted to add several more pages, but then I felt like I started to read each of the different headings and there's so much information just in each of the different subheadings. I think we just need to take one at a time. And while there are very large chapters in Romans 911, because I like the number 12, I like things to be written in, in numbers that carry authority. There are 12 chapters. 
in this book, but they are long chapters. Having said that, in the book, the, um, the subheadings are broken down into like two, you know, one to two pages. And uh, for most of the time, I mean, uh, I'm not gonna carve that in stone, but for the most of the time, we are gonna go through this book using the headings um, and uh, uh, just allowing the spirit to, to take these, these, uh, the, the, the subject matter and, and take it deeper down into our spirits and for us to enter into a dialogue. But the purpose for the one human intersection is for us to pray into that. So, you know, the, uh, the heading is about the unique transaction that's about to take place. It, it's, about, it's about this reconnection in us to love one another. And beloved, it's already happening. I mean, look at it, just look at all the beautiful brothers and sisters on this call already. We are moving in this transaction. Jewish and Gentile believers loving the Lord and loving one another and wanting this, this beautiful new humanity that Yeshua created at the cross and the resurrection to be re-established in the family. And so we're all on a journey, all of us. The key is for us to increase our knowledge and revelation. That takes humility a lot of us in the church, even those moving towards the Israel peace, one of the challenges us for, for this project to come forth is most of them think they understand it. And uh, you know they just go about business as usual. But if we really understood how significant this transaction is, we would run to it with all our hearts, like all of us on this call are already doing. The, the, the challenge here is for us to begin to break through in intercession for the rest of the church to be able to, to understand it that way. And, that's, uh, and you're going to hear me regularly kick back to the reconnection mandate and the five different directives that the Lord gave. I didn't write, I mean, I fine-tuned this with Leslie Crincoli. We worked on it for a year, uh, almost two years we worked on this document. I did not give these directives. These directives were given by the Lord. They are five directives for, for the body to move in and understand. And, and we're very much in directive number one for the, for the body to understand the significance um, of this message. And of course, the, the uh, unique transaction that takes place, it's, it's not about Jewish roots. And we're seeing the church move towards Jewish roots, and yet the, the relational thing is not on the map where it needs to be. And that has to change. We have to recognize where the ecclesia is and the current deceptions that are out there and the enemy strings that the enemy is still pulling on. So we now have to intercede for the rest of the family. So, you know, one of the first questions, actually, we're going to ask Bob tonight in the webinar, and I, and and I'm I'm going to lay out the question here. Um, um, but then what I want us to do is I want us to get quiet and listen to the spirit and invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us about this and let, let prophetic words flow, visions uh, and understanding. Uh, there are three topics. I know I've spent quite a bit of time talking about some other things tonight, but our, our, if, if we put it into like 10 or 12 minutes for each section, we should be able to get it in. So the first question we're gonna ask the panelists tonight is, is, is the reunion in the one you man? between the remnant of Israel, and that's Jewish believers, right? That's how, that's how scripture talks about Jewish believers. Romans 11, verses one through seven, they're called the remnant. So, so you, we, let's get used to, what, to, to, to the term, the remnant of Israel, because this refers to Jewish believers. So is this reunion in the one you man between the remnant of Israel and God's children from the nations, the epicenter? in God's end time plans to restore the church. There's an understanding that Israel's significant. 
but not that it and not the revelation it, it, and knowledge that it is a source it's a fountain of his presence it's a fountain of his love and his peace and his joy that the father is looking to release from this peace so what I want us to do is let's just go quiet. I'm going to just invite the Holy Spirit to just to speak to us. Let's go quiet for a couple of minutes and then let's uh, just allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to pray into this particular topic. So, Father, we just come before you and we just ask you to give us a, a, a deeper understanding, even give us revelation pictures. You have so many beautiful watchmen intercessors on this call that are so gifted with, with prophetic insights and pictures and words and scriptures. Father, we, we, we want to hear from you, Father. We're one body and you desire to bring us together. But uh, Lord, we need to understand how important uh, this this reunion is and where it actually fits in your end time plans and the equation um, to bring about uh, the transformation in your church that is needed. So, Holy Spirit, would you just speak to us and give us insight? Hallelujah. And as you begin to get uh, different pictures, words, insights, I want to encourage you to share. Just, uh, uh, just raise your hand uh, in the reaction button. You could uh, just click it like I'm doing right now on mine, raising, raising my hand. So the first image that came to mind for me was the bullseye on a dartboard, how it's more valuable because it's, it's worth more points. Here's the definition of epicenter, a point directly above the true center of disturbance from which the shock waves of an earthquake apparently radiate. 
a focal point as of activity. Grant, I have a um, vision, if it's okay that I share. Sure. Um, so I saw the hands of someone polishing and refinishing a beautiful wood floor, but I could see that under the floor, there were holes and there were gaps, almost um, as if the floor was crumbling from beneath. And so um, just as I was asking the Lord to explain, he says that this reunion between the Jewish believers or the remnant and his children from the nations and our relationship is the subfloor of the reconciliation. It's not the foundation, which is Christ, but the subfloor. And what's happening on both sides is like... Um, the refinishing or polishing the aesthetics of the floor so that it appears good, but the subfloor needs to be strengthened and made new and replaced um, so that it is strong enough to hold the beautiful wood floor. And right now the church and what we're doing is focusing on the aesthetics and this reconciliation or reunion in the one new man is that subfloor that is necessary to hold up what the world will see, mm -hmm. to carry what the world will see. Go ahead and pray into that, Marie. Father, we thank you that you first and foremost have given us Yeshua as our chief cornerstone, the foundation on which our faith and our relationship is built. We thank you that through our reconciliation with you uh, through our faith in Jesus Christ, that the same spirit, the indwelling Holy Spirit lives in each of us. And it is by your spirit, we are anointed with the ability to reconcile and to love one another. As Christ loves the church and as he loved you and you love him, so shall we love one another in you. And so Lord, we ask that as we step forward, we begin to recognize those foundational things the subfloor, as you've shown us in this, this vision, those subfloor things that need to be addressed, that need to be uh, healed and made whole and even strengthened so that what is happening on the external, what the world sees in the church is more than just the facade or the aesthetics of beauty, but it is filled with what you have said should be our portion. And that is that we are filled with everything that is righteous, everything that is good, that we do everything for your glory and that everything that we do is built on the foundation of Jesus as Christ and each of us as members of one body united together in love. Teach us what it means as we go forward, Father God, even as those parts of the subfloor, because we know that even that takes some process and it takes time and it takes commitment, it takes resources. Teach us what it means to trust you in the process to trust you um, through the tough times and when it feels uncomfortable and to move toward one another rather than to repel from one another when those reconciliation uh, things begin to happen and you by your spirit start to weave us together more intimately. We thank you that we don't need to do any of this in and of ourselves. We give it all to you. We say create in us a clean heart and give us just a right mind, a right spirit um, in this walk of reconciliation. And we trust you with it all in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. The Lord gave me a really interesting picture. And I was wondering if I could screen share for a second. Um, hold on a sec. Go ahead, Sue. Okay. Um, hmm. 
It's weird. It's not showing my picture. One second. I don't know if you can see. Can you see this picture of, of water? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So Looks this awesome. is this is in the Gulf of Alaska area, and it's where the ocean meets the meltwater from the glaciers. And the Lord gave me this picture of of His body meeting at this line, but not mingling, not mixing. Um, and I would imagine just scientifically that when these waters start getting roiled up and the waves start churning and things start really moving, that's when these two bodies of water actually join together and become mixed. And so Father, I just ask right now, Lord, that you would stir up the waters in your body, that you would stir up um, both sides, Lord, where we meet in the middle, Lord, where we refuse to come together, where we refused to, um, to join up with the rest of the family, where we've isolated ourselves and isolated others from us, Lord. I ask that you would stir up and churn up those waters and cause us to, to forcibly be mixed, Lord, to, 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 to be um, the blender, so to speak. That, that you would be the blender, Lord, that would bring us all together. You would be the catalyst, Lord, that, that we know we need to, to be mixed together, Lord God, but sometimes we need a little bit of a push. We need a little bit of a, a stirring. And so, Father, I ask for a stirring in your body to cause us to have the desire to mix, to cause us to see that what's in one side of this water is pure glacial ice melt, that probably has a ton of minerals in it and the other side, but is probably clear water and um, fresh water. And the other side is salt water that has all kinds of other things in it. And in order for us to have the right ecosystem for your kingdom, Lord, we need both of those things. We can't just have one or the other. We need both to be mixed together. And so I ask Lord, that you would mix us together, that you would stir up the waters that you, Lord, would cause us to see the need, Lord, to, to move towards one another instead of away. And I just thank you for that right now in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Let's have one or two more prayers on this before we move to the next. I want to say um, that when I see this image, because I live over here near the water, that I've seen this kind of image before um, just taking place. And it's not necessarily the meltwater where you have salt and fresh, but just when you have converging currents, you notice that the white line of, of foam that goes between the two different pieces there, that that's because of the pressure from the two different currents that meet each other that has that, that literally forces air or oxygen whatever it is up to the surface and i don't know if that if those bubbles come from underneath or if it's just because of how it gets agitated when it gets to the surface but you see that line of foam that so it's not just the two different colors but there's that white dividing line and which is the air which is the activity which is I, I think it's sort of like an image of the catalyst that you actually can see the catalytic action displayed in living color between the two. And, the, and then it's like the, the Lord is, is like breathing on those things. And so I get a, another dimension of what it is that you've got there, Susan. So I'm just uh, uh, affirming what it is that you're seeing there. Yeah. Can you pray into that, Bob? Yeah. Father, I, I just... There is a convergence, Lord, that you do in the spirit. 
when things come together. It doesn't just happen here down in the physical realm, but it also happens in the spirit. And that uh, as you bring these two different groups together, Father God, that there is a battle that takes place, but there is also a reckoning that happens as things that have been out of balance, that balance is being restored, Lord. And that in the midst of the turmoil, sometimes in the midst of the battle, we can lose track of the grand design and what God sees from heaven as to what he's doing and why he allows the battle, why he allows the turmoil, because he's in the midst of doing something marvelous here. And that we just pray, Father God, that we would stay attuned to what you're doing in the Ruach with this. And this reunification, Lord, is something that it, it creates a dynamic, catalytic uh, interaction that things are being precipitated in the spirit, Lord. Um, and, um, and that I just pray, Father, that, that we would become attuned. We would listen more carefully to what you're doing, Lord, so that we would have the sensitivity as you speak to the prophets um, and, and, and those who you've given the authority to, to speak these words out to the body. Mm. Um, and that, that your word actually says that you, get, you give those things to the apostles and the prophets, Lord, so that they would be able to share those messages with the rest of the body. And I pray that as the members of the body hear this, that they would actually not only attune themselves, but, but as, as when Moses uh, passed the burning bush, that it said that he turned aside. He was on a pathway. But when he saw the burning bush, he said, uh, I got to go see what this is. And that, that people would actually, when they see what's going on, that they would actually halt the course that they're on to turn and to see what you're doing, Father God, in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Bob. The, the next question we're going to ask in the webinar is, what is the Israel piece? And why is it so significant to the end time reformation in the church? Now, you know, on the, on the, just the, uh, on, on just the scheme of these two questions, you think, oh, they're somewhat similar, but they're really not. The first question raises the issue why is this thing the heart? Is it at the heart flow? You know, Amavarine had this, this great image, you know, of the floor and the foundation of the ecclesia. The why is, uh, what is the Israel piece? The Israel piece is this beautiful uh, reunification. It, it's a type of marriage. Um, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into the 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 def exact definition of that but you know i will say this the bride is one bride we're one body we're one with the lord we're also one bride that is going to be married to the bridegroom and so there's this place of of unity in us and and but so um uh, you know so much of the church moving towards Israel is not recognizing this. And um, th that this piece is key. It, it, because if we miss this, let me tell you what happens. What, and let me tell you what is happening. When we miss this, because of the deceptions, the obstacles and the influences and the hindrances that the enemy is pulling on and using, he keeps the the church and Israel and the messianic body on the church and on separate tracks. If he maintains separate pathways and tracks, he is able to maintain control. And so this one new man restoration is about disarming that and causing the two bodies to come together in love and unity. And so understanding what the Israel piece is and how to define it is very key. So again, let's, um, why don't we uh, this time, let's, uh, let's unmute together. Let's pray in the spirit.
Um, you could be loud or, or soft, however you, however the Holy Spirit leads you to pray. Let's just pray in the, uh, a few minutes in the Spirit, and then let's go quiet again and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. I think what we're going to find is if we can use the prayer time effectively for the Holy Spirit, um, our time in the webinar can be richer because we'll also have a deeper understanding of of how the Lord is looking to unpack that this to us, if that makes sense. So let's unmute. Hallelujah. And Father, we we come before you and we ask you for a yes, deeper Lord. revelation. We ask you come to you in the Let's just go quiet for a minute. And then Kate already has something she wants to share. Hallelujah. you need to unmute. Okay. Um, I was seeing this image in the in the spirit and it was like a paper doll chain, you know, when you have those cut out paper dolls and they're connected. Um, and it was Jew and Gentile, Jew and Gentile, Jew and Gentile, all the way around this paper chain. And it was wrapping around the globe going from nation to nation to nation all around the globe, like a global wrapping of John 17 love around the world with the one new man union. Mm -hmm. And I heard a cord of three strands is not easily broken. 
and it was just really clear nothing was going to break this and it was wrapping around the whole world and I heard that song you know he's got the whole world in his hands <laughs> that song and I think ultimately you know what disarms the enemy is the love of God and childlike faith the faith of the kingdom and so just like the cross is foolishness to the world, his solution was foolishness in its simplicity and it's, you know, just it's um, what it is. And I, I think in a way there's a, I mean, yes, there's a need for the warfare and all of these things, but I just see ultimately there's just a simplicity of what he's doing that's out of love and faith. And it has so much power, it's unbreakable and it surrounds the whole globe and makes this change. Amen. Amen. Bob often speaks of that simplicity when he describes the reunion in the family. You know, hallelujah. Go ahead and pray into that, Kate. Father, um, <laughs> I love that, first of all, we're your family. You're our father and we're your family and that we're coming together as a family and that it's a hand holding in the spirit and that nothing is going to break this. Um, what you br bring together as one, no man can separate. And I just thank you that that is what you are choosing to use to uh, surround this whole world with that John 17 love, the love of your son and you as one. And I just thank you, Lord, as you get each one, Jew and Gentile, into place, uh, we're going to form this magnificent, unbreakable cord of your love. And I thank you that there is nothing the enemy can do against that. I ask you, Father, that you just break our hearts open for you, uh, that you can pour that love in for you, for each other, that we bind to each other in that love. And Lord, that we walk um, with shrewdness, but with the childlike faith that you said we cannot enter your kingdom without. So I just thank you for that. Um, all the things of you that are not understandable, not breakable, not penetrable by the world or the enemy. I thank you for that in Yeshua's name. Amen. Man, that was a beautiful picture. We've already had a couple of really beautiful pictures. Thank, uh, thank the Lord we're recording this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Let's have a couple of people pray specifically for the, the church that's moving towards the Israel peace for them to get a greater revelation of the reunification in the one you man, the reuniting together in love and unity. So have a couple of people pray into that for the church. Even pray for your local churches as well. Pray for your local churches to understand this revelation. Father, I thank you for your church. I thank you for the revelation of, of the Israel peace. And even now, Lord, with so many, so many churches celebrating Hanukkah, lighting candles and celebrating the feasts, Lord, I'm asking that you would take them deeper, that it's not just about doing the things that they do but it's about your people, Father. So I'm asking that you would connect the dots for them, that, that it's a beautiful and wonderful thing to celebrate. Lord, I'm asking that they would keep on seeking the knowledge, the revelation of your will for your people to connect in those ways in Yeshua's name. Right. We had um, last night, we had four Messianic churches and two Gentile churches that got together to to do Hanukkah caroling. First ever, probably ever anywhere. Um, 
uh, Gentiles and, and Jewish believers together. We called it a one new man event, and uh, we broke up into three different teams and covered about 60 houses last night, and uh, it was overwhelming. Mm. Uh, the response from both Jewish and Christian homes was incredible. So, Father, I, I, I thank you as a church that's, that is moving uh, in this direction towards uh, Jewish believers and towards the one new man. We pray, Lord, that you would give us your grace, give us your heart, and help us, Lord, to um, do the little things that spread the fragrance of Jesus, the fragrance of Yeshua mm. around us. I see the flowers in in Susan's background. Um, it doesn't take very many flowers to produce a fragrance. Um, and uh, there's very simple things that we have, have done and are doing. Very simple things that um, have produced a buzz in our Jewish neighborhood. Mm. Um, that are beginning to be the fragrance of Yeshua. Praise God. That, bu God. that buzz is the bees on the flowers, you realize. Yes, it's true. <laughs> Phil, you know, Papa Phil, um, you should share that tonight in the webinar. I'd be happy to. Opportunity. It was a and, wonderful time. And if you could, try and connect it to directive number five, because you're moving in directive number five in the reconnection mandate. And I want, I want people to try and really drill down and understand the different directives the Lord is giving for us to move into this equation. And, and what, what, what Phil was sharing with us are the fruits of this restoration of him reuniting uh, with, uh, you know, more than any other leaders in the country. Papa Phil has been across the, 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 the olive tree from one side to the other, connecting the messianic body come and the church coming together. And so he, the Lord's beginning to lead him in, uh, you know, this wonderful thing, Hanukkah caroling, praise God. Hallelujah. Did, and did, uh, did anyone, anyone like uh, have any revelation of Messiah? Any of the Jewish people have any revelation there or just, just seeds were planted, seeds of love. What seeds of love. It, it, uh, the carols, we, we sang Oh Hanukkah, um, Hanukkah, Oh Hanukkah, and um, uh, just uh, we, we walked up with a packet of, of, of um, hot chocolate, kosher hot chocolate, and, he, and uh, Hershey's Kisses in a bag and said, we'd like to give you a gift. Would you like a song? Do you celebrate Hanukkah or Christmas at this house? And some of them, some of them had Hanukkah on the front, um, but others didn't. And uh, uh, we had, I don't know, between three groups that were out, we had about 30 households that were Jewish in the neighborhood around our church. And uh, the, the response was overwhelming, though, for both those who received and those who participated. Um, it was just an, an incredible evening. And we were only out for about an hour and a half. Um, so the three groups each took about 20 homes or so, something like that. And uh, just really little simple things that, uh, you know, that's when the Lord told me that we were to be a fragrance of him in this neighborhood, uh, he said, you know, it doesn't take very much for you to smell a flower. It's about 10, 15 parts per million for us to, to smell something. Papa Phil, pray into the ecclesia for them to get this revelation. And for next year also to bring jelly donuts. Yes, I know. I, I heard that. And you'll smell amazing. Amazing. That fragrance will draw them. <laughs> So Lord, thank you for thank you for the uh, the pointers that we get along the way, and uh, thank you for um, the willingness, Lord, to just just be in love with you and in love with your people. Um, let it 
let us get the the um, a vision of your unfailing love um, and how it is shed abroad across your bride um, that that what you have in your heart is a bridal love for your people both Jew and Gentile and um, and uh, we just pray Lord that uh, <laughs> I see we've got a little buzz going about jam donuts or jelly donuts um, so uh, we may have to explain that that's a that's a traditional Hanukkah, Hanukkah treat um, as far as I've been understood so um thank you thank you father hallelujah um beloved we 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 didn't have much time to focus on the on the third question but we'll we'll get into that uh, in in the in in the webinar in a few minutes um but i want you i want you you know beloved think about the epicenter and the Israel peace and ask the Lord for deeper revelation and understanding um, to, to, to really, because as he brings this message deeper into our spirits, he is going to begin to shape and master us to communicate this love message to the, to the, to the body around us. Hallelujah. And uh, to fill us with this, this love, this love that, you know, that, that we talked about, you know, through the, through the sponge cross that was squeezed and out came this liquid love that just permeated. And, and that's the vision. The Lord's going to use this reformation. I'm convinced, it, of course, this is going to be the most incredible, powerful time for the church on the face of the earth before Yeshua returns. But it's going to be about the fruit. It's going to be about the love and the peace and the joy emanating from our hearts and spirits in the midst of maybe difficult circumstances, overcoming and loving and, and, and dealing with the way that the enemy tries to come at us and putting him under our feet. And so praise God. Um, hallelujah. 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 We're going to... Um, Antoinette, would you like to close us in prayer tonight? And then, uh, Hallie, if you'd like to pray for Bob and Terry to release the hour, um, we will then begin to sign off. Hallelujah. Um, and then uh, just one more thing, the link to the Romans 911 Project webinar, webinar, which starts at seven, in 15 minutes, is it's in the chat. Susan has posted it a couple of times. Go ahead, Antoinette. Abba, Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for fellowshipping with us, for releasing so much revelation, Lord. We, we just bless you. We honor you. We say thank you, Lord, for testimonies from Papa Phil, Lord, of, of that connection really taking, taking root, Lord. And the bees are buzzing and the fragrance is uh, being released, Lord. Father, uh, we believe the angels in heaven are excited, and we are. And we just say thank you, Father. Would you, Lord, press us to go deeper still? Would you give us grace, Father, to take these concepts, these visions, the things you've released tonight, before you and teach us, teach us, Lord, the secrets of the kingdom for our day and for our generation. Mm -hmm. We bless this meeting. We bless everyone on it. And we ask you, Lord, to move us forward in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Adrienne. Father, I thank you. I thank you for Barbie and Terry Franklin. What a beautiful gift that you gave this couple. What a beautiful witness that we get to see. Even when we're not here, we already know 
that you are releasing something through them each and every time they open their mouths. And it's not just the beautiful anointing sound. It's there's something so special. They even as their heads are down, they even look the same with their hair. There is such a significant, <laughs> special unity between the two of them. And we're so That's thankful right. that we get to witness this. And and Lord, we just we well, we pray such a a blessing, Lord, that that the as the Thank worship you. goes on tonight in this hour, that the angels would just <laughs> hearken there, they would just all be leaning over from the heavenlies and rejoicing and and that they would even be moved so we thank you for that in jesus name glory on their heads that's that that's crown that of glory, glory. Yeah, i can't look, I can't at, look at you guys, guys. you guys so, gotta so, put, so, a, put a, a veil over your face <laughs> <laughs> let's keep talking <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness uh, well i'm I'm glad you like the hair. I paid very good money for it. <laughs> That's why I'm my daughter has a hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm telling you, so glad. Hey, I think you need to sprinkle a little stardust in there. Put that glitter, you know. I told you, honey. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, I'm just <laughs> grateful to hear voices again on this call. And Father, I just pray blessing over each one that's yes. on this call. Lord, I just, I thank you Bless for these Susan. dear brothers and sisters. Yeah. And we just say happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas Grant to everyone, Mary. Lord. Alexis. Father, I thank you for each one, Lord, and I pray that you'd meet every need that they have, Father, that uh, you would bless their families, Lord. God, that uh, uh, if there are any in, in their families that don't know Jesus as Savior, Lord, that you would draw them to yourself, yes, Lord. And uh, Father, at this time of year, Lord, when people are thinking about, uh, just thinking Amen. about Hanukkah and Christmas, Lord, that uh, may they think of Messiah. May they think of our Lord and and, uh, and be drawn, Lord, to you. Amen. And uh, we just, we pray, Lord, that this hour, Lord, Amen. that we would honor you. Father, we pray for the webinar, yes. Lord, that goes on at the same time, that you would bless that as well. And uh, Lord, may we continue on in a, uh, uh, attitude of worship and prayer and we just we thank you again lord for the technology to be able to do this and yes. uh, grateful for it and uh, ask your guidance in jesus name amen 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 well i tell you what